Welcome back to another episode of Hoodness Shed. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Is looking forward to a new year. Um, meanwhile, it's freezing cold in here. I've just turned the heater off. As soon as this camera goes off, I have to switch it back on again, but it makes too much noise. So where are we? Right. <clears throat> on with, rolling on with the TZR, back on with the engine casings. I found a way around the bolt that was stuck in the engine casing. I've tried to get out with the easy outs and yada, yada, yada. I looked at a few options and I found a way around it for not a lot of money either. So we're going to be carrying on with the engine today. It's pretty much stopped on the forks at the moment because I don't have the money to buy all the parts that I need to rebuild the forks, including the stanchions and everything else. So they're on hold for the moment. Um, so yeah, we're cracking. We're, we're still going to carry on with the engine casings and I'll show you around that one. So stick around, stay tuned. We'll see how I did it. So here we have the original engine casing, the snap bolt that's still a pain in the ass to get out. And I was looking at helicoil kits and everything else to go in there, and I'd already spent I think it was twenty thirty quid on the easy outs and the tap and die set to do that job. So it was starting to mount up, and money is a little bit on the tight side. So what I thought I'd do, buy another one. Now, bear with me because this was a fiver off of eBay plus five pounds, so ten pound. So the helicoil to buy that. Or the, all the kit and stuff that I need, and the amount of hassle I need to do just to get that bolt out, £10 delivered. No, she's bolts in it, it's still got some of the seals in it, these will have to come out. So, here as well, still got the eyelet in it. Um, it is dirty, it is a bit greasy. There is, although, one scuff mark on it there, which is nothing major. There's worse on the other one. And still got the filler cap. No seized bolts, no snapped bolts, no nothing. £5 delivered. Now, I'm not sure if that's classed as cheating or not. But I'm all for saving myself as much hassle as possible. And for a fiver, bonus. It also means with this one, before I do anything with this one, or the rest of the engine casings, I can test it on this. So when I come to spray, when I come to da-da-da-da, I can test it on this engine casing first. To make sure it's all right before I put it on the on the end one. So there we go. Oh yeah, and the latest addition to the garage or the shed or whatever, the new mug showing the evolution of man all the way through to there we go. I have got the t-shirt that matches that, but thank you Andy and Bethan for that. That is fantastic, and uh, yeah, that is now the new mug. Right, so the first thing to do is take off the seals. I've already taken the um, little eye, this is where you see the measure of the oil out. And as you can see, this is a this just sits up on the inside of here, like that. Uh, I got that out with a rubber mallet and a set of pliers. Uh, I chose these ones because the rubber tips tap down on the top, just through the hole there. And it just pops out. I didn't put anything metal on it. That is glass. I don't know how tough it is, but I don't want to shatter glass. So that's that one out. And then we'll take the rest of the seals out. Now it is entirely possible that I don't actually need to do this. Um, obviously, we can take that out just by turning it. Um, but I am replacing all the seals. And everything anyway that was always the plan on the old one I don't know if these are reusable so I don't know if I'm going to be able to reuse them but I would imagine not so just carefully with this with a little screwdriver see if we can lift those out There's one spray a bit of oil everywhere and this is the one for the water pump Now, I'm not going to throw these away. I wonder if we can employ the same method to punch that one through. I don't really want to hit anything. No, not quite. Okay, let's try it with them. There we go. Now, on the 
each of these, I don't know how well you're going to see it on this, but on each of these seals there's like a code. So I don't know how well you're going to see it on here. But this one is a S1021-5-1, I think that is. I can't really read it in this light. I'm getting old. I was 40 the other day, so my eyesight's going. Keep those because I'm going to need, again there's another one on here, another number on there. Going to need those when I order the replacements. The seal parts are like bearings. If you look on the inside of a bearing, there's always a part number on the inner. I haven't got one to hand to show you, but there's always a part number. Now you can go to Suzuki and Honda and everything else, and you can buy the part from them, this bearing, and it will cost you an arm and a leg. Or you can go to a bearing shop and buy the same bearing for a fraction of the price. You just don't get the Honda or the, the other badge on it. Well, certainly that's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. Right, well that little screwdriver just, I don't think was doing the job properly. So, bigger screwdriver. But I don't want to damage this around here. So what I'm going to do is just use an off cut of old cloth just to rest on the side of the uh, casing like that, so when I put this screwdriver in and lean, I'm, this piece of cloth is taking the pressure, not this soft alley here. And that certainly seems to be shifting it. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to get people sending me messages saying you shouldn't do things like that, you shouldn't <coughs> take a screwdriver or stuff to an engine casing, it's all well and good. I, it's probably is 100% true and who am I to argue, um, but this is a learning curve and these engine casings are a fiver. So, if I uh, if I do kill another engine casing, you know it's not the end of the world. There are some more on eBay. So we'll just work that one out. That's coming up now. Uh, unfortunately, this is still covered in oil, so it's going to need to go around with a bit of a degreaser as well. Is quite a thick plug but it is out and the boring side seems to be okay there's no scratches or damage on it <clears throat> but then the screwdriver went in there's a groove inside this bunk there's a groove inside there and it went in there and tilted so that's out again there's another number on top so keep that to one side so we can get the numbers off them and there we are parts off now uh, all we need to do is give it a bit of a clean with some degreaser right now you can buy stupidly expensive um, engine degreasers and everything else or you can use this stuff. This is, I mean, I'm not promoting this product, but this was a pound from one of the pound shops. Um, and it's a degreaser. It degreases things. You can use this stuff. It's what it's for. And it's a lot cheaper than spending eight or nine pound on a can that's that big of degreaser. There you go. All purpose degreaser. It says on the back. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, elbow grease is tough enough to get rid of oil from a car engine. Well, that's not a car engine, it's a motorcycle engine. I'm guessing it's the same principle. So, $8.99 on a tin, you get eight tin, or you can get eight spray bottles of this stuff. I've used it before. I think it was what I used on the engine case, on the engine case originally. So, there we go. Right, 
Now, I do have a big bucket of water to dip this in, but it's outside. Can't take the camera outside because the sound quality is terrible. So, basically, I think it's fairly obvious what you do. Cover this in your degreaser. A pound, and it does have a crack trigger in your degreaser of choice. With your crap nozzles, <coughs> it is switched to one. And the best Blue Peter tradition <coughs> is one I had as well. Let's see if this one works. There we go. No, that one decided to die as well. <laughs> so maybe you're better off buying the um, eight to ten pound bottles in because <coughs> that hasn't worked at all as well. Oh, hello. We're back on cue. It just doesn't like being led over to the side. Fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> Don't buy this cheap shit. Go and buy um, the eight and nine pound aerosol cans because at least the aerosol cans on those things work. Come on. And it says in here, this is what I like: new and improved trigger. <laughs> what? It doesn't. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Maybe it just needs a water warm up. But we'll give that a good soaking in some degreaser. Is that new and improved trigger? Right, so we'll just let that uh, soak for a while. And then we'll come and wipe that off. Right, I had the fan on. Sorry, the heater on on the last one. <clears throat> I've just taken the clip of this. And I left the heater on. And it's on the, the camera was over that side of the table and I'm right handed so it was a bit of a pain so I've, I've moved it around hopefully this is a better option so just move with these brushes again cheap pound sock brushes there's nothing expensive just to get some of the loose dirt off the inside of this plastic engine cover this goes on the left hand side so it's the generator cover that type of thing um, and I think this is where the chain goes it's been a while since I took this apart but the chain comes in judging from the, the type of dirt that's in here, if I remember correctly, it's been such a long time since I took this bike apart. And it always starts off with, oh yeah, yeah, give it six weeks, it'll be up on the road, yada, 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 yada. And here we are, I don't know, months, years later, and I'm still, I'm closer, but not close enough. So like I said, just these, brushing off the dirt, just to get that off. Most of the... Uh, the loose stuff. The outside's already pretty good. Um, yeah, now on the outside, my understanding is, of it is, and I believe, believe I got this from Dell, um, uh, from Dell Boy's channel, Moonfleet41, go and check him out, well worth a watch. Um, lots of good information on there. Um, when you're doing stuff like this, when you're cleaning stuff, you want to use when you want to remove this sort of crap and it's caked in and the brushes aren't doing it, you want to use something that's softer than this. So ideally what I want is a plastic scraper, which I don't have. However, I do have plenty of screwdrivers. Now as this is on the inside, and I think if you take enough care, you can remove most of this crap. It's on the inside, if you scratch it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not doing it on the outside. Um, so I'm just going to get a screwdriver to remove these final bits. And when it comes to painting, I'm having the whole engine the same colour in that engine casing paint that I showed you before, the high temperature paint. Although I might have to change that to very high temperature paint, I don't know. Um, but they're all going to be the same colour. It doesn't require a primer, and I'm wondering if it will work on this, or am I going to have to get a different, a different spray can. But just an old screwdriver, just to get into these corners and remove, there you go, see. Actually, you might not see just to get into these corners because 
So I do this filming on a mobile phone camera. So sometimes you're holding it well away from where you should be and you can't see. Okay. So like I said, as long as you're careful, it doesn't really matter too much on the inside of the engine casing, I don't think, because it's the inside of the engine casing, a couple of scratches aren't going to make any difference, but it's certainly easier getting this rubbish off. Look at that caked in. nastiness and of course we can once we've got the most worst of this off look at all that then obviously we can clean it further I'm also learning when you're doing a rebuild on a motorcycle that a lot of it especially at the start is cleaning there seems to be a lot of cleaning involved in, in rebuilding a motorcycle the other thing I've got to learn when doing these videos as well is commentary. I tend to get a little bit, because this isn't my natural environment, I'm not really a mechanical person, I'm not really, it's the first time I've rebuilt a bike, I tend to focus on what I'm doing. Odd as that sounds, and I tend to sometimes forget that the camera's there, so there's a lot of, because I record all of this stuff, and there's, a, there's quite a lot of it that I have to edit out because there's nothing, there's just me doing whatever it is I'm doing in complete silence and you can't do that when you're recording a video I'm not sure why I can fill it with you, it's fairly obvious you can see what well, I can play some crappy music I guess right I said I've got a a bucket of soapy water outside to go and wash all this stuff in <laughs> the sound quality on the camera goes way off when it's outside so I'll go and do that while you recover from the boredom. Right so the engine's, uh, engine casing is cleaned, all the grease is gone but it's still covered in this silver painty lacquery type stuff. All the technical terms now um, which I don't want on there I want to take that off because I said I want this whole engine to be uh, black, so I need to take this off. I have tried nitro, I did try nitro morse on the other engine casing with not so good results. It seemed to be very patchy, and some paint it came off very well, others it didn't come off at all. Um, I've tried grinders, I've tried grinding wheels, I've tried these little doodads for the Dremel. Now, the Dremel itself, fantastic tool, this is brilliant. Um, and I've gone back to using these coarse brush type things which do remove it quite well. Um, you do chew through them, but it seems to be, it's a bit more effort. Well, I don't know, it's not as much time, because you, 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 can, see it dis you can see it coming off before your eyes with the, the nitro moss, the paint stripper, you seem to have to wait for a while. Um, you have to leave it, and then you have to rinse it all off, and then you see that it's done this bit, but it hasn't done that bit, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this is, this is much better, in conjunction with those. I cannot stress enough, even though I'm an amateur and I've got absolutely no clue what I'm doing when it comes to tools, do not use something like that without something like that. Not unless you want to go blind, because it is kind of nasty. So let's fire this up, and hopefully you'll see what I mean. Um, but I don't know what the sound quality is. I reckon the sound quality is going to be pretty bad, but I'll see if I can turn it down in the edit. So there we are, um, that is an hour and a half, two hours with the Dremel on one of those discs. Still got a few bits in here to take out, but it's brought this up an absolute treat and pretty much all the way around the side. Lovely, fantastic. Right, well that's it for another episode of Hood and Shed. New engine casing coming up a tree, nice not to have any seized bolts in there, nice not to worry about that again. Like I said, it could be it could be classed as cheating getting another engine case in, but for a fiver, well, ten pound delivered, um, 
and it was a lot less hassle and a lot easier than trying to get that stuff out. I've still got the bolts to deal with in the bike, but that's not too, I can deal with that, that's fine. It's just that engine case, I want to crack on with the engine at the moment. So that's better. I've still got the old the spare engine casing, and so I can use that for test when I want to paint it, and da, 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 da. I can use that as a test piece rather than on the other pieces. So we'll get that done. Didn't get a chance because it's over. I've overrun. I was getting so into it, I completely lost track of time. I haven't had time to finish off the other the plastic engine casing. Hopefully, I'll get time in the coming days to get that done and get that uploaded as well. But yeah, loving the Dremel. Absolutely one of my favourite tools. Um, worth its weight in gold, that thing, I think. Right, anyway, it's enough of my waffling. Have a great New Year. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, like I said before. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of Hoona Shed. And see you on the next one, ride safe.